Good morning. What is the fate of those whom God uses to chasten his people? Our reading today is Jeremiah 12, verses 14 through 17. Thus says the Lord against all my evil neighbors who touched the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Then it shall be, after I have plucked them out, that I will return and have compassion on them and bring them back every one to his heritage and every one to his land. And it shall be, if they will learn carefully the ways of my people, to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. So those nations have a choice to make. The faith of the faithful among God's people is always more spiritually satisfying and helpful to every heart than the false religions and the false schemes that people get into uh, in false religions. So if God calls a nation to come and use them, use their sword to chastise his people, God actually has a blessing for those people. For those people who would chastise God's people, he's testing their hearts as well. They are given a unique opportunity. They can leave aside Baal worship to worship the true God. God is giving them an opportunity to enter into his truth. He's giving them a great blessing. He invites them to be joined to him. But if all they can do is rejoice in the punishment that they're inflicting, if they're just taking delight in violence and mayhem and gathering in the material possessions of these people, that is not going to go over too well. If that's their spirit, God is ready to utterly pluck up and destroy these nations. Isn't it interesting how God brings good out of evil, how this, even this kind of a situation is one in which God is working? He wants people, all people, he wants to influence their heart by his Holy Spirit so that they'll all learn to be kind and generous. This is a work that is continuously happening that God is trying to achieve. So God makes a time of chastening for his people, a time of opportunity for heathen people. He's working to bring good out of evil. All nations, all people groups, they need to revisit what spirit they're of. Are they receiving the influences of the Holy Spirit? Are those things becoming manifest in their life? Kindness and generosity in a spirit like that? Or are they just glad to put in the knife and, and, and dig it in deeper? Are they rejoicing in that evil way? How do they react to God's influence? The way they react is going to come back and whether God can say, as we have in this verse, that they are evil neighbors, or are their hearts going to be open to him? God is working for every heart, not just yours and mine, and every person gets to choose of what spirit we will be. So even the people who God uses to chasten his people, even those people, are given a great opportunity. They can turn toward the God of heaven and earth. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we look at what's going on here and what's being described, and it reminds us, Lord, you're looking at our hearts. Every decision we make is a test of our heart. Every decision is an opportunity to come closer to you or to go backwards and go further away from you. Please, Lord, help us always to come closer to you. And every opportunity that every person receives, Lord, we pray that your influence will, will be to lead them to draw close to you, whoever they are, whatever nation they are, whatever people they are, Lord, please may, may we come together in oneness. We thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So those who are assigned to chasten God's people, they're given special opportunities. May we always be receptive to the influences that he exerts to lead our hearts to be more like the heart of Jesus. God be with you today.